So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got a great guest that's back on the show. It's been two years since this guest has been with us last uh, for Brave New World. It's the wonderful Joseph Morgan. Joseph, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much for having me, Brian. I'm so happy to be back, man. Oh, you know what? Two years. I can't believe it's been two two years. And I'm sure myself and your adorable fans would want to know because these last two two years have gone by so quickly because of this pandemic and everything that's been going off in the world. We've blinked. Our kids have got yeah. older. And literally, we're here in 2020, 22. So how have, have you been over the last two years? And how have you kept positive and moving forwards? You know, it's been crazy, hasn't it? Um, what a what a time to live through, mm. like really, a, a you know, an historical mm. uh, experience. You know, you, you think about sort of uh, something that changes the entire world. It's, it's absolutely crazy for me personally, you know. Well, first of all, I've, I've been really lucky because, you know, touch wood, I've still managed to get through it without catching COVID, which is kind of awesome. amazing. Yeah, although I've been pretty careful, and um, uh, it's probably largely to do with my wife being <laughs> being pretty careful and like, here's what we need to do, you know. Um, yes, listen to your wife. <laughs> that's yeah. That isn't that what Denzel says when when he's talking about picking roles or, mm. or just any kind of big decisions. Just listen to your wife, which is is true. I think <laughs> never a true word. Um, but yeah, it's it's it was such an interesting time. Um, you know, uh, we were living in, in Los Angeles and uh, and then everything just kind of shut down, and including the business. Um, and I'd just finished doing Brave New World. I'd finished in Christmas 2019 and I'd flown home to L.A. Thought, right, going to hit the year hard, you know, start with a bang and try and get another job in, in, in the pipe there. And then everything shut down. And... Uh, th- this sort of immense tragedy occurred. So it was pretty crazy. You know, for me, I I didn't shoot anything um, for about two years. So really, uh, Titans was the... Me and my wife did a little project together that's still in post. But other than that, Titans is the first thing I shot since Brave New World. Wow. So it was a crazy long period of time. We did, you know, to keep sane, we, uh, we did a lot of stuff that was um, uh, with the fans. So we did a lot of uh, these kind of shows on stage it for people and IG lives and did a lot of kind of fan connection stuff um, just to try and uh, check in on everyone and to try and... Um, you know, keep a connection going and sort of just to feel a bit connected to the world as well. And these people who we felt kind of slightly responsible for, I suppose. Um, So we did a a lot of that. And then I did a lot of writing as well, just trying to, you know, I go a bit mad if I don't have a creative outlet. And so I need something to kind of to to do to feel like I'm being creative. And for me, during the pandemic, that was... um, a fair bit of writing um, and then these shows that we did. And, you know, it was weird. I did some press stuff. I did, you know, all of the post-production for Brave New World was done virtually, as you know, like we did. Um, I did photo shoots over Zoom, which was (laughs) crazy. Uh, I did my ADR, which is, you know, the additional dialogue recording, the looping for the production. I did that for uh, Brave New World in... Uh, literally in my walk-in closet with my iPhone, recording the, the you know the sound that they put in in post in a for a Brave New World. So it was really a, a crazy experience. And then just you know, so much news, watching the news, watching the numbers. Mm. And then we ended up moving. Actually, mate, we moved um, to uh, Hawaii, which was oh, wow. kind of incredible. Uh, it, it's amazing and uh, absolutely the paradise that people make it out to be. The move itself was probably one of the most stressful things I've ever done. <laughs> you're loading everything into a shipping container. And also, we were, we're really big on masks and gloves and wipes and trying to do everything in a way that would be safe with the movers and with our place and all of that was incredibly stressful. But 
we were lucky enough to be able to sort of just about afford to do that and and to to go somewhere that um for once wasn't uh, we weren't living somewhere which was based on work it was a life mm. choice you know mm. because everything became virtual all the meetings with directors and castings and if we're doing audition tapes or anything like that uh it was all all done virtually so you could be anywhere in the world really i mean what's been the biggest lesson that you've learnt you know personally over the pandemic i mean what's what have you taken from it as your biggest lesson i mean that i feel like there's just for me there's become there's more of a global awareness so I just feel like honestly uh it probably it sounds a bit contr contrived to say but i just feel like i've really realized how lucky i am first of all living in the western world so having the kind of access to vaccines that we had and and also just you know being able to do something like move to hawaii i mean i know that's not an option for most people to you know dig up their lives and move somewhere that they feel is safer for their family and um so i felt you know really incredibly lucky and a bit guilty about <laughs> about doing that like oh, <laughs> just because i know it's such a sort of um you know it's such a privilege to to be able to do that really i suppose um so yeah there was it it, it was really that that sort of i i took stock and realized you know i'm i'm always i'm 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 sort of was constantly i've come from uh how, how to say this sorry mate i'm i'm kind of it's mumbling okay. a bit but i'm i'm i always feel like I move from moment to moment going, you know, okay, but what's next and what's mm. more? And I could be doing better and I could be doing more and I'm constantly driven to try and find the next job or the better thing, or this is good, but it could be a stepping stone for that. And mm. it, it, the pandemic forced me to just completely slow down and and stop. And uh, I did so much playing with my dogs. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, let's, look, let's be real. For dogs, the pandemic was brilliant because mm. everybody was home with with their animals and got to spend time with them and so mm. it really made me kind of appreciate those little things in life and and you know make choices for my life as opposed to for my work for the first time so really just uh was able to slow down and, and be more aware of that mm. you know i think i think for me the the biggest lesson out of the pandemic was appreciation as you just said for the little things because i think we we take things for granted being in the western world and then yeah. we look around us and we look at our family and we look at humanity and and, and you know being thought thoughtful i think throughout the pandemic it definitely split the thoughtful people to the people that just was wasn't very nice it was that clear sort of sort of split i mean i saw it every day because i had to work through the pandemic every single day and surrounded by thousands of people um so i unfortunately caught it twice my wife caught it twice as well um and in How our was it for you brian was it was it oh. bad or was it do you know what? Literally, it was like being hit by a truck. Um, no energy. Yeah. I couldn't walk more than five feet. Uh, but do you know what? Mm. Um, you know, I had the vaccines. Um, you know, yeah, I did everything. Really I wanted good. to be part of the solution, not the problem. And, yeah. you know, I'm quite fortunate that, that you know, it didn't affect me too bad. Uh, but going from it, I, th I, I, I think we need to respect each other a bit more, uh, be a bit yeah. more, a lot, a lot more love in in the world we need um compared to uh, you know going against all the rules but you've been busy obviously recently your social media is yeah. been blowing up um <laughs> and i've got to mention so, so let's let's start talking about titans because literally it's one of my favorite shows and the reason for this is because it's taken my favorite superheroes and put it on screen made it darker made it more grittier it's not like teen titans for the kids it's completely yeah. the opposite so we are obviously had two episodes so far of season season four so if you could talk us through how you got the role of sebastian yeah. aka brother blood and what's it like now being part of the dc universe uh well okay yeah so um uh, I just, uh, you know, another thing I did during the pandemic is um, 
I moved agencies. So my agent, my American agent, I'm talking about, which is uh, you know the representation yeah. I have in in the United States. And um, my my new agent, Stephen Gersh, he's called he's at Gersh Agency. He's just been absolutely brilliant, just kind of championing me from the start. And uh, that he mentioned to me you know, during one of our chats about six months after I moved to him, he mentioned, you know, there's also this, uh, there's some interest from this project Titans. Um, we're working on it. Uh, so, so that's a good thing. And I said, okay, what do I have to do? And he said, mm, nothing, nothing for now, but we'll just, uh, you know, we'll just play it out. And so, um, when it happened, it was, it was, uh, an offer that came through, which is a relatively new thing for me. You know, I'm used to auditioning for jobs and, and to, to fighting for them in that way. So to have a sort of, first of all, mate, to have a kind of the recognition for the work that I've done, mm. you know, to, to for them to be able to look at that and go, yeah, we'll trust this guy to play this pivotal role in season four was such an affirmation and such a wonderful feeling uh, especially coming out of a period of, of no work and feeling like, you know, I'm going crazy, like <laughs> a lot of the world, I'm sure. Um, so th that was incredible. And so what happened was um, I got the offer and then the showrunner, Greg Walker, wanted to do a Zoom with me to just kind of talk me through what the role was and to so I could get a sense of what I'd be doing. And so we had a really terrific uh, Zoom meeting that was about an hour and I just, honestly, I just, I, 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 oh, I hadn't seen the show as well. So I watched, they sent me two episodes to watch, which were the first ever episode, the pilot, and then an episode from season three, just to get a sense of the tone and the show and everything. And, um, and then I just, you know, picked his brain to pieces about the, the, the show and the role. There wasn't any scripts, so I hadn't seen any scripts. And, um, you know, when the, the, the part came in and they said he's called Brother Blood, I thought, oh, yeah, OK, I know why they've... Uh, <laughs> I get Stereotype. A to me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, but it, it turned out to be just this amazing uh, opportunity, you know. As soon as he pitched it as an origin story, I really thought um, there's a wonderful <sighs> chance here to to show a, a, a massive character arc, you know, a mm. massive journey for this person. And as you've seen from the first few episodes, he's very, I mean, he, Sebastian starts off in such a different place to where he ends up, you know, you, you'll see as the journey progresses. Um, but yeah, so I just asked him all about it and uh, all about the other actors on set, what they were like and, you know, how that experience was working with them because I wanted to get a sense of what I'd be getting myself into as well, you know. <laughs> I'm going to be spending a lot of time with these people. And also just um, really about the character and his involvement. And he said to me from the beginning, listen, the first two or three episodes, you're going to be sort of lurking in the background. It's not going to be a heavy part for those because we need we want to sort of build him in slowly and I thought okay so I was prepared to come and and that is what it turned out like for me it was it was like I came in once a week and did my own movie with none of the other cast and then you know a, about a month in I started to meet people and go oh hi you guys are the, <laughs> the Titans okay good. um so that was the experience of getting cast and then uh, oh and the other thing I should mention is I had, they they needed to do that. That happened in uh, October of 2021 because I had to do super suit fittings for, um, for about six months leading up to shoot it. So one a month, I'd fly to LA once wow. a month and start the process of these fittings, which started with just the concept art and, you know, them taking intense measurements, me getting a full body scan and a head cast. And then... Uh, you know, it progressed into something that looked like a kind of cosplay version of the Brother Blood costume. And then, you know, we go and they'd be comparing finishes on the this piece of armor at the front is called a gorget. They'd be comparing finishes on the gorget and talking about every detail and um, LJ Super Suits, the <coughs> company who did it. Uh, mm. And they were amazing. So that was an incredible process as well. Um, mm. And then, you know, to be part of the DC universe is tremendous for me i think i've said it before like i grew up 
reading comics and um, and of course uh, watching the old uh, Adam West Burt Ward Batman series on on telly, you know, and uh, and then so to to be a part of that universe. And especially to play a villain who I always felt like the villains are sort of the more interesting mm. roles, you know, um, it was just such a kind of, such an honor and a, and a kind of a dream job, mm. you know, to come in and, uh, because it, it, it's such a different kind of thing because you, as a villain, you come in and by the end of the season, it's like the whole show is sort of revolving around this, what your character's doing and they're trying to get a handle on it and clean it up clean up after you almost and so it's a really uh showy role to come and do you know there's real opportunity there to for some drama so uh yeah that was that was that's it really I, think. I mean i mean when you say that in the first two episodes you're sort of in the background for me i find that more fascinating when you've got characters that literally are not in your face because you know that something's going to kick off eventually. You know that yeah. you know the first two episodes is definitely setting the stage for what's going to happen this season. And from the first two, I can already tell this is going to be the best season to date because literally the first yeah. two ep- two episodes, I I I, I will in awe of everything on that screen. And Sebastian, especially, you could tell that literally something's going to boiling away and cooking away so what has been the most um you know challenging part i mean i mean i would say that brother blood is quite fitting for you as a part because i find you jo- jo- joseph a very uh, character actor you know you mm. like to pick parts that challenge you and you invest yeah. your time in them and rightly so so what's been the most challenging part of playing sebastian um in tight titans uh, um well it's it's twofold you know um first of all i wanted to make a physical transformation so uh i w- i started um intensive uh physical training for for the role leading up to it and i deliberately picked clothes that would hide that for the whole beginning half of the season so you, you you don't you know you see he's in all these baggy clothes mm. and these things that don't show any any of his body shape really because I knew that I wanted Brother Blood to be kind of domineering and to have I wanted Sebastian to sort of it, the 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 transformation that takes place to be physical as well as mental so it sort of it's this thing coming out of him and he's becoming more powerful you know so there was. There was that part of it. I worked with a really great trainer called Nuno de Salas, who works with Josh as well, who I know you had on the show mm-hmm. recently. Um, and uh, that was great. So I just went in five or six times a week with him whenever I could. And we we just, you know, made slow and steady progress. And luckily, I didn't really have to... Nothing was really on camera in terms of that transformation until about episode eight. So I had a good good run to really get myself to where I wanted to be, you know. Um, so that was pretty challenging for me, more intense than I've, than I've done before in terms of that, that kind of thing. And then the other thing was that I just, from the beginning, I knew, even when I talked to Greg before I'd seen any scripts, I knew what I really want is to make, to play a relatable villain, you know, and I felt like I've had some success in doing that before. And I, so I definitely need to use the first half of the season to get people to warm to Sebastian. So I need it. I, it was, I was determined to create those bonds with, uh, with other characters, one character in particular from the Titans to really create a strong bond and a relationship that would challenge Sebastian's, you know, view in terms of taking that power as he moved forward, because he's kind of being pulled back in the other direction as well by that relationship by those feelings he has and I also wanted to make sure that it was rooted in um, a reality so even in the first two episodes I hope that you can see as well as of course the dramatic mirror scene where he's you know sees himself covered in blood and it's sort of almost like a different part of his personality coming through I wanted to make sure there were little cracks in 
Sebastian's sort of nervous persona where you could see there's that's the ego coming through a little bit you know mm -hmm. and that this guy he could be capable of some other things and i and so my goal was to to build that in from the beginning so that at the end the cracks would show his humanity and the rest of him would be that personality so it sort of goes from one end of the scale to the other but both sides mm -hmm. of it are present in little glimpses if you see what i mean yeah so for example when Sebastian in, in episode two makes the presentation for his video game that he's designed at the end, they, when they turn him down, he says, um, but I'm, I'm going to change the world. And there's just a little kind of darkness to his, the way he says it, I hope that comes through where you think that he, there's something more to this guy, you know, there's just some kind, a little bit of an undertone of anger to him that isn't able to, manifest itself yet but but it's coming that scene is awesome and you're right in what you're saying is that that i think everyone took that from 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 that because at the end you're thinking oh no what's going to happen this is changing him and i've got to say the cast is absolutely fantastic i've got to show this picture because yeah. because um there you go i've got to say <laughs> do you know what I, th I, th I think you know things are happening to, to sebastian to, to sebastian to to get him to where he is going to be as a villain but these scenes with this lovely la la lady she's so sweet i've got to say i've got to show that so picture good, mate. <laughs> yeah i had the best day with her and uh <laughs> she was she was so nice valerie and we just we just spent all morning together, you know, I wanted to really build that bond in as short a time as possible. And she was so funny, swearing and stuff, you know, like really cracking up all the crew. And then she saw that I was sitting on a chair and she said, she saw that it said Sebastian Sanger and then it said Brother Blood underneath. She went, Brother Blood? And I said, yeah. And I told her a bit about what happens to my character and she went, oh, you're the villain you're the villain and she couldn't believe it you know but because uh you know i'm so sweet in that scene he's so sweet but i really um had a lovely time i thought she was terrific and mm. for someone to come in and do one scene like that and help flesh out my whole character and and you know build that whole foundation was really wonderful so yeah Mm. I mean, one thing I've always been fast fascinated about is when we see characters on screen, who decides on the accent? Who decides what accent they have? So, so your accent, obviously, as Sebastian, was this decided before getting the role or during? No, or after? I decided it, man. Did you? I decided Good man. it. Yeah, I talked. I talked to Greg, and I said, "Where's he from?" And he said, "Well, he's from Metropolis. You know, he grew up in Metropolis." I said, "All right." Um, but I'd like to play him English. And I did that. That was uh, another listen to your wife moment because um, I talked to her about it. And, you know, I can do American accent and I've done it for jobs before. But she said, you know, there's two things that one is uh, the character's an outsider. And for him to, to accentuate that, that feeling of him not belonging and being an outsider, uh, the, the idea that he sounds different as well um, could really help separate him. And um, Greg didn't have a problem with it. He said, we'll just make his foster mom English. <laughs> and so he grew up with her, you know, learning English from her. And that's how he has the accent. And um, the other side of it as well is, you know, uh, for the fan base that I've built up over the years, I know that um, the my voice and my accent is like a thing that people have latched onto a little bit in, mm. in in the role of Klaus. And so I wanted to, um, I felt like this show Titans is going to really appeal to those fans, especially as the transformation goes on and, and he becomes more confident and more in towards the person that he eventually becomes. Uh, and so I thought by by keeping an English accent, I'm just going to double down on that, uh, on appealing to them. And I feel like that's a strength worth playing in this, uh, in this role. So, yeah. The I, other I, thing, I just want to say yeah. one, one other thing, Brian, actually, mm, yeah, if that's right. Um, in terms of the character, um, I was, I knew that it was going to be, that, that I was going to start quite different, you know, quite timid and vulnerable and 
nervous as Sebastian and 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 quite an outsider. And that was a very a big shift from Klaus and from that role that people were used to seeing me in. So I really wanted to make it clear on social media, and I just took the initiative to do this myself, that this was an origin story and that where he begins isn't where he ends up. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, know, I knew it was a slow burn and I wanted people to stick with me and to, to know in the beginning, oh, okay, we're seeing, not going, oh, this is who he is all the way through. This is a interest, like a totally different character. So I knew it was important. You know, like the best example recently is Joker. So mm. we all know who Joker, the Joker is. So you watch Joker and from the beginning, you know who Arthur Fleck is going to turn into, right? Mm. So the interesting thing about it is seeing how he becomes that person, that character. Um, and that's what I wanted that's the journey I wanted to take people on for this. So they know he's going to end up as something else. He's going to end up as this villain. They've even seen this, the suit, you know what I mean? So it's really about how does he get there now. And I can't wait to see the suit in action because the detail in it is just phenomenal. I mean, even the uh, the uh, hieroglyphic sort of, sort of, sort of word, wording on there all means something and the detail that they've obviously put in it. Uh, have you kept that suit? by any chance <laughs> no i never want to see it again it's so uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> you've got to suffer for your yeah. art um oh but yeah God. i mean i mean there was something as well that that was going around that apparently i bring up a picture uh, apparently uh, the tie that you wore um was your dad's is that correct or is that just yeah just mis no, yeah that's true oh, yeah that's you. true yeah it was um you know, my dad died almost, uh, well, actually just over 10 years ago now. And so um, he never got, he got to see me be, you know, play Klaus in Vampire Diaries. And I remember talking to him when he was ill about the fact <laughs> that I'd been offered my own show, the originals. Yeah. And that, so we're going to be all right. Like, our, you know, nothing, we, we'll, we'll be okay for money, our family and all of that stuff. And um so I kept some of his clothes that I loved. And one thing is that tie. And so I just felt like, it, well, I, I kind of, it was just like having a little piece of him with me in, and also because it meant some, because of how Sebastian starts off and he's so close to his mum, who, who then he loses. And I just thought it was fitting really. And it was like, I don't know, it, it just, it just helped me, but more than more than it kind of helping me emotionally be in the right state or anything like that for the character. It was more like I just wanted, I just wanted to feel like he was still with me on this journey, in, in a way, not really in a spiritual mm -hmm. way, just kind of for me, for my own comfort and. Uh, you know, and I, com I, don't know. And, I, and I completely best I can com explain it. No, I completely un un understand because I lost my dad two months ago. And, oh my god, and, I'm so and, sorry. Do you know what? He was a great man. And do, yeah. you know, the thing I've learned is is what we do in life now uh, is to honour those people. You know, yeah. I know that every day, you know, I'll always think of him and continue my life in his impression. And it's been a tough time. It really, really, really has. And it's really nice that you're yeah. taking a piece of your dad's. I mean, it must must be a dad thing because my dad had about three hundred ties, and <laughs> I've literally had ten or twelve of his ties. Yeah, everything from smart ties to to funny ties with the Flintstones on it. You 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 yeah. you name it. So if if I'm ever in need of a tie, I've 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 got those. Um, but no, that's really great to hear, and it's great that you're taking him on the journey with you uh, yeah. to to on on honour him, uh, which is great. It really is. And talking about clouds as well, um, Josh, uh, who was on the show last week, he's never watched the originals, and he said apparently yeah. you was teaching him about the the whole thing of the ori originals and teaching him about the show and ev and everything. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, because we, we, you know, we talk a bit, a bunch, because we have a lot to do together later in the season, which is really fun. Mm. Um, and then, you know, we were at the gym, uh, we'd run into each other at the same little gym a, a lot as well. So we'd, we'd talk quite a bit. Um, he's such a committed actor, Josh. I mean, aside from the physical thing, which he was, you know, so committed to and the eating and everything like really regimented he really 
you know, he couldn't be more prepared. He comes in with ideas. He was just like an absolute joy to work with from start to finish and just, and such a knowledge of the canon as well. Mm. Like it, intricate knowledge of his character and all the references and, and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, really fun. Um, so that was the good part about him. Bad side, hadn't seen the originals. <laughs> So had to educate him, <laughs> fill in the gap there for him. He's probably spent the time since Titans watching the entire season through from beginning to end, though, I would imagine. I'll have to check in with him. And may, maybe if you make it to season five, uh, you could do a quiz for him and just make sure he's learned a lot <laughs> about the show. And if he hasn't, just don't talk to him. Um, so we're going to go on it? to... Yeah. yeah. We're going to go on to some fan questions. Um, oh, so yeah. as you can imagine, um, you know, I, I, I thought I'd throw it out there and get some fans in, involved because I see a lot of in, in, interviews being done and, you know, the fans are just great. I mean, they are what make... You know, actors, you know, they buy the tickets, go and yeah, see the shows. Uh, so it's really nice to give a, a bit back. And you, sir, have got fans all over the world. And that's going to be proven right now. Uh, so I don't know how your Colombian uh, is. Um, but don't worry, I've I've interpreted it. And, and I will tell you what the question is afterwards. But I'll start okay. off with Christine. This is her question. Hi Joseph, my name is Christine. So my question for you is whenever you were playing Sebastian on screen, was there anything that you ever wanted to change in between takes or something that you weren't happy with that was, wasn't being conveyed on screen? And if ever given the chance, would you want to bring Brother Blood to the big screen? So there we go. Yeah, okay. Uh, so um, one thing that I did while I was playing Sebastian was I really wanted to um, I really wanted to give myself the freedom to explore this character. So what I would try and do is each take that we did, I would try and find something different there so that, you know, for the editors, when they came to editing it, they would have lots of different options of performance to, you know, what some that were more in one direction emotionally, some that were more in a different direction, some that had, you know, slightly different blocking or different moments that I'd, I'd find. So, um, I was always looking to, um, that's, that's what I tried to find in between shooting scenes, uh, you know, in, in between the takes is, is just something fresh. So I was never doing a take trying to recreate what I did the previous take. I was always trying to be in the moment with the other actors that I was in the scene with and really find something fresh and real because I really believe, Brian, that that's the best acting mm. when... Um, when you see someone and they're actually experiencing something in real time that that a, that a thought occurs to them or, or something happens that they didn't expect, because that's life. You know, we say something and then someone else some, some, says something to us and it's it's news to us, you know. it's We didn't expect it and it leads us in a different direction. And I think if you can try and capture some of that freshness on screen, then that is, um, that's the best acting. So I was, that was what I was trying to do is, is come at each take like it was the first time I was ever experiencing this and, and not let myself be guided by anything I'd done previously. And, you know, of course, I'd love to explore Brother Blood <laughs> on the big screen. I actually, I, I actually really loved the experience on Titans more than I thought I would. Not that I thought it would be bad or anything, <laughs> but I, I just really enjoyed the character and the exploration and working with the cast. And so you know, if I could continue in the DC universe in that role in, in whatever show or format, I think I would take that opportunity because I feel like there's more to explore there. And um, it, yeah, it was just such a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't see enough villains. I, I, I think, as you said early, uh, earlier on, you quite like the villains uh, because they're more interesting. And and you, you're right. I mean, you know, we don't see as many villains on our screens in solo projects. And I think we need to see more because I love villains. I really do. I think a lot of the time the miss the misunderstood. Un but um, but I think you know we need to see it on the big screen. We've got the next one uh, from Julia. Uh, I'll play this now. Here we go. 
Hi Brian, hi Joseph, it's Julia Plews and I'd like to ask Joseph, you did say that Sebastian's ego takes over as he becomes Brother Blood, but I was wondering if we get a glimpse of Sebastian's humanity, does it return in the final episodes of DC Titans season 4? Thank you. There you go. Julia is uh, one of our great supporters. You know, my wife and I are well aware of her and she's, uh, she's very active on social media in supporting us and going to all of our events and being sort of champion for my whole family. So uh, it's lovely to see her up here on your show. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I uh, absolutely tried to keep the humanity throughout. I didn't. I, I never wanted this to be a Jekyll and Hyde character where now he's brother blood, and I constantly um, pushed to integrate that into the writing of the show th throughout, and to find those moments of humanity right up until the very end. So, um, yeah, especially like in uh, the beginning of the opening sequence of of the finale of episode 12 there's a moment that um that i i worked with our writer to come up with um that wasn't in the script and it and it was something that really tied the whole humanity of the character together and his his want and how he uh you know he still has the same desires he had at the beginning, but they're amplified mm. and they they're twisted, but it, it's the same thing. It's, it's coming from the same place. It's just distorted and, 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 and grown. Um, so yeah, absolutely. That was my goal to maintain the humanity throughout. So I hope that I've achieved that. That was certainly the, my main concern with the character. Well, we've got plenty of episodes left to find out. I just cannot wait. I can't yeah. believe we've only had two. And uh, literally, everyone's begging for more already. So the next question, uh, she didn't put a name. It just says uh, a YouTube handle, which is anonymous, uh, which is pretty trendy. Um, so here we go. Hello, Joseph, and be more super. I'm just wondering what Sebastian does when, you know, he's not brother blood, like his day job. Okay, thank you. There we go. Well, yeah, good. Well, as you uh, as you've seen in the first two episodes, Sebastian is uh, he's working the night shift at a taxidermy. Uh, so he's uh, it's called Wolfman's Wolfman's Taxidermy, and uh, then he's he's working to design his computer game. So he's really he's really pushing on that. Uh, those, those things that you know his dream is to bring people together through this game that he's he's invented and uh that is something that he carries with him you know through through a lot of the season he you know he 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 maintains that dream and that that comes into play so that's really it and then you know once uh, he gets on the brother blood path so to speak um it's really a roller coaster, and you know some people have uh, have talked about this already. That I, I think that one thing that's terrific about season four is the pacing. So the first two episodes, they have action, but they don't start off like a rocket ship because where do you go after that? Mm -hmm. So they they're starting off this season and they're giving us the same action that we love from Titans, right? But they're 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 doing this sort of train that's slowly speeding up speeding up and it they really maintain that i think it rockets at the end you know so it's it's gradual build but it really rockets at the end so by the time we get to the point where sebastian is you know making these decisions and going further and further down this path there's no time for a day job he's <laughs> he's on he's on that rocket ship at that point and he's uh yeah he's uh he's going towards his dream Right, two more questions left. This is a young lady from Colombia, so uh, you can always have a guess, um, but I haven't put subtitles on. I will tell you uh, what the question is afterwards. Her name is Camila. Here we go. Hola, Joseph y Brian. Eh, pues trataré de hacer la pregunta de esta manera. Eh, mi pregunta es cómo fue interpretar el papel de Sebastián, eh, teniendo en cuenta que ya has interpretado otro, eh, otro villano antes. 
eh, cuáles son las características que definen a este personaje y cómo él lidera con ello en esta temporada. So there we go. Um, so um, she basically wants to know your shoe size. Um, no, she <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so, so what a question was, what, what was it like uh, playing Sebastian, taking into account you've already played a villain before and what, what characteristics define him? Um, so it was great uh, playing Sebastian uh, having played a villain, you know, like I said, I knew from the beginning I wanted to maintain his humanity throughout. I wanted to make so that you look at the guy at the beginning and you look at the guy at the end and you go, they're the same guy. I can see there's a, he, he's undergone a huge transformation and it's been a huge character arc, but I can see, even if I don't agree with his choices, I can see why he made those choices. Mm. And I was able to to do that because... I had all that experience playing a villain, so I could come at it from an informed place, you know. Um, and I would say, uh, you know, he is, Sebastian is, um, he's complex. He's, he's uh, deeply insecure and he's, he's vulnerable, but he has this kind of ambition and this belief that he needs to do these things to change the world, he needs to make the world a better place. And that gets kind of uh, twisted as he goes along. And so he, he does become more confident as the season progresses and he does become more powerful, but there's this deep seated insecurity and feeling of inadequacy that stays with him the whole time and sort of drives him and that and that's what plays at his ego and that's what makes him become what he becomes so that's kind of um i guess that's how i describe him i mean off the back of that it always intrigues me that you know these characters are very intense so so what do you do after filming these scenes to get out of character i mean, I mean do, do you do you take your job home literally or do you literally leave it on the set i mean how do you get away from you know you as joe joseph from say sebastian in the way of like sort of taking a break because it's quite quite intense yeah no i leave it as on set mate i you know i'll uh i just have to kind of come home and unwind and make a bit of dinner and talk to my wife and we'll watch a show and have a glass of wine or something you know I have to sort of like I have to come home and talk about it first like mm. here's what happened and it went like this and I think it was good and I did this and then he, <laughs> she's normally run the lines with me so she'll know the scenes you know um and then that's like I'm sort of expelling it you know mm. and then uh from there I can kind of let it go um it's harder you know it I I find it oh not too bad because it's so cathartic acting that intensely i find because whatever it is whether it's tears or anger or whatever emotion it's like you're you're letting it all out mm. so you get home and you feel like ah oh, feel it's more like before it's harder to let it go so like like um i'm shooting as at the moment as you know and i, I think and and so like i worked the other day and i'll wake up in the early hours of the morning and then not be able to get back to sleep because I'm playing the scene in my head and I'm thinking, oh, maybe this would be good. And I, I, my body, it's like my, all my nerves are kind of jangling because I know I've got this scene coming up and I'm thinking about it and I'm anxious, but I'm excited as well about it. So once it's done, I can let it go. But it's really the whole period before mm. leading up to it where I, I, I have it with me at home. Mm. So the last question is from As Asmira. Um, again, um, yeah, so there's a bit of background noise. She's at work, uh, which you can guess from the uh, uni uniform, which is great. So here we go. Hello. My question is, what is the scene you would like to do as Sebastian? So a, a really posh McDonald's outfit there. I don't know where she's from, but it was yeah. quite it was quite nice. Um, so wh what what was your favourite scene? She's asking. That she, without uh, so without causing say, your man. NDA to you know explode. Oh yeah, ruin it for everyone. <laughs> um, it's so hard to say. 
you know, uh, some of the stuff I do with Rachel, with Tegan, I really liked that. Really, really liked that that character dynamic. That was deeply important to me, um, and something she and I both pushed for, and and increased and made much more than it originally was going to be. You know, and it was already going to be something. Um, uh, I have a scene with her in the finale of the whole thing that I really like. I have a scene at the beginning of episode eight that the showrunner Greg and I really that's it was really expensive so they weren't going to let us do it but we really pushed for it really wanted it to be something and we and we managed to get it so i really i'm looking forward to that as well um i'd say that stuff and then there's a scene in episode three which is going to be the next episode coming out um and it was a scene where it was like i knew that I was going to have to go to a place emotionally where I'd be able to show a, a bit more of what I can do as an actor, you know? Um, and so I was excited about that. And um, it's funny, me and Persia always joke about this, but like it happened, it, it's happened to me a few times. It happened to me after I did this scene, the crew came out uh, and I was sitting, you know, they were doing a new setup and I was sitting kind of just listening to music and staying in, in my zone, you know, that I was in for the scene. And he came out and he went, you're a really good actor. And and it was such a lovely compliment, but it was also like, I like that you were surprised that, it, almost like you're surprised at that, like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> like, well, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's always sort of a funny double-edged, like, like you didn't expect me to be good, but I, actually you turned out to be all right. <laughs> so it was, um, but that was also one of my, favorite early scenes because i i got to really go to a place with it you know mm. i mean i've got to i've got to say i'm really excited for the rest of the season and i've got to uh, mention why you're in budapest because season one of halo was astonishing it really was and i've had a few of the cast on the show uh for season one and you're going to be in season two which i think is absolutely yeah. it makes it even better it makes a season yeah. even better. Uh, is there anything that you can tell us about your character and who you're going to play? Or is your NDA literally going to tick away and go boom? Yeah, no, I never know where the line is with that stuff. I mean, I can't tell you <laughs> plot points, you know. So I, I think it's common knowledge. I'm playing a guy called James Ackerson, who is in the canon, but we're, we're playing him quite differently. Um you know, well, if you look at the drawing of him, you'll see that, you know, I'm playing him. So he's quite, he lo I look quite different to how the, uh, the to that version of Ackerson. Um, he is uh, put in charge of the Spartan program uh, in replacing Dr. Halsey in, in a way. Um, and uh, I'll say this. So the showrunner for, for, Halo is it, it, Halo has a new showrunner this season, um, and in fact, new heads of department for for every department, um, and it's going to look quite different to season one. I enjoyed season one as well, mm. but I feel like I've read I've read all but one of the scripts for the season now, and the writing is just absolutely fantastic, and I really feel like it's leveled up, like the intricacies and the the. Uh, <sighs> you get to know every character and there's and every character evolves through the season uh my each of my scenes i'm reading them going this is a scene stealer scene like this is one that you come in uh and you know like the character is just so dynamic and charismatic in the scenes i feel like so excited to play it and i got on this job because uh david weiner is the sh new showrunner and he was the showrunner on brave new world oh. so he's he brought me into the fold when he got the gig, he I was a, one of his calls to say, hey, do you want to come and play over in Budapest? <laughs> and he sent me a few scripts. So I thought, I can't not do this. It's mm. just absolutely and, and So and, I'm excited. 
And how long are you you you, you over, over there for? Are you towards the end of filming, or are you you're there for a few months? No, no we're. Um, I start, mate. I had three days off when I finished Titans. I filmed my last scene on Titans. I had three days to get to Budapest, and then I was filming again on the fourth day on Halo, nice. my first day. So I've never had that. It was crazy. Um, so that my first day was the fifteenth of September on this, but we're on it until may if we finish on time which wow you know it's a massive show so it may not finish on time wow. but um yeah so look yeah. look absolutely looking forward forward to that because i'm not a um i don't play halo um i'm not a massive ga gamer even though my wife would disagree um so watching the show i i watched season one with fresh eyes and i i, I really oh, nice. enjoyed it so i can't wait for season two um one of my last last questions before we bid farewell is if your life was a movie, Joseph, what title mm. would it have and why? <laughs> if my life was a movie. Mm. Wow. Um, you know, like... I guess I would want it to have something, have some reference to these parts I've been playing, these things. So, uh, something like the heart of a villain or villain with heart or something like that. I, I feel like I'd like some kind of reference to that. But it's the kind of thing like a tattoo where in a few years I go, oh, I really regret calling it that. <laughs> you know, why have I got that stupid title on my movie? My to be honest, movie? to be honest, I, I I completely agree. And I've done that so many times. I was thinking of like a reference to Wales and, and, and calling yeah. your, your movie like the green, green grass of, of you know, you know villains or something like that a tom jones something reference because like obviously yeah. wales and, ev and everything like that but joseph you've been a great guest it's been an absolute honor to have have you on i'd love to have you on once uh halo comes out next year yeah uh, that yeah. would be so much fun and it'd be a, an, an honor once once again keep safe and stay super Cheers. thank you so much brian thanks for having me mate mm -hmm.